thought it was called 10,000 times faster. And it was true when I submitted this topic. Four days ago, the company Dway, Canadian company, released a new version of quantum computer, which is 1,000 times faster than the previous version. So now we have 10 million times faster than transistor computer. This is the pace of our acceleration. The progress is really accelerating. Well, to understand the quantum computing, it's better to understand everything. Because if you know only one piece from here or from here, you have to just remember this piece without understanding. We need to connect the dots. If you see everything, it's easy to understand the entire universe. So we started to compute because we spread from our location. First part will be easy. How we compute it to spread further? It's kind of lyric fairy tale, understandable to non-technical guys. Second part will be hardcore. So, how software exactly is eating the world? Where is this huge mouse that eats our planet? So we walked on foot until we could. Then we domesticated animals, horses, and we rode horses, and we stopped at, this, at the water. To sail the water, we have to design ships, some geometry, algebra, wood, iron, also navigation by stars, by sun. And we invented wooden computing. Wooden computing abacus. Really could compute. Slowly, but really. And this first abacus was bigger than a man, smaller than a room. This is interesting. It's miniaturized to the desktop size. And we still have abacus in Africa, in China, Russia, maybe Ukraine. <laughs> then we invented metal computer, mechanical. Charles Babbage with his analytical engine. A lot of gears, a lot of muscle power to rotate them. And this mechanical computer was faster than wooden. And the first one was bigger than a man, smaller than a room. And it's miniaturized to a really small mechanical calculator, Kurta. Really popular even 50 years ago, now very popular on eBay. <laughs> yes. Then we invented electromechanical computer. You don't need big muscles to rotate mechanical things, but the computer is still electromechanical. Konrad Zuse invented Z3. Bigger than a man, smaller than a room. And it's miniaturized down to desktop size. Something new happened. It started to maximize to Harvard Mark I, used in Manhattan experiment to detonate nuclear reaction. Then we invented first pure electronic computer, ENIAC. No more mechanical things. Bigger than a man, smaller than a room. And this computer on vacuum tubes miniaturized to desktop size. And it's also maximized to something big. By the way, miniaturization went really cool. The same module, smaller, smaller, and smaller. A lot of women in the industry, they wrote the code we want those times to be back. <laughs> so, it's also maximized to the big combat center. This is fast transistor computer, also fully electronic transistor. Actually, this is second, because the photo of the first is absent from the internet. It's, it was bigger than a man, smaller than a room when it was invented. It's miniaturized to our wearables, mobile devices, spy devices, different medical devices in our bodies, and it's also maximized to huge data centers. This is a photo of real supercomputer called Tianhe 1A. Five years ago, it was one of the best computers in the world. And there are metrics what they calculated. So, they calculated 110 billion individual atoms during 50,000 evolutions. 
It took three hours of our physical time, and they computed only one tenth of nanosecond. Is 100 billion atoms a lot? One gram of iron has exactly 100 billion times more atoms than this computer did in three hours to calculate only one tenth of nanosecond. Nature works differently. We could continue stack servers, we could stack GPUs, but we could not find billions of billions such computers to calculate only one gram of some material. How nature works? We just take this iron, we heat it, and it melts it simultaneously. Nature calculates all relations between all those particles with some unknown way. So, here comes quantum computer. Bigger than a man, smaller than a room. You see the pattern? It's new way of computing, and it's really taking off. This is a huge refrigerator. Cool for this room. And the chip is fixed at the end of this strange structure. It works in absolute vacuum, absolute zero, minus 233 Celsius, 20 kelvins, and also shielded from Earth's magnetic field. What you need? Just close the door, prepare a computer, offload your task, switch it on, switch it off. In less than one second, you have your computation done. What I did, personally, you could not find it anywhere on the internet. It's my personal research. So, I plotted it, I plotted it. I took the time scale horizontal, and vertically we have logarithmic scale sizes in meters. One meter, 10 meters, 100 meters, kilometer, centimeter, millimeter, micrometer. And I plotted wooden computing, bigger than a man, smaller than a room, and miniaturized to desktop. Metal computing, mechanical, bigger than a man, smaller than a room, miniaturized. Electromechanical, also miniaturized and maximized. First electrical on vacuum tubes, miniaturized, maximized. First transistor chips, miniaturized and still miniaturizing, and maximized and still maximizing. And now we have one to here. It will definitely maximize, maybe slightly miniaturized. And what we see here? Just, let's connect the dots. I see this is a tail, this is a body, this is a huge mouth. And this mouth means computing at each scale. And our planet Earth is going to be eaten by this dragon. <laughs> okay. This is how it looks. See the similarity? This huge mouth is exactly this one. This software dragon is eating our world. So computing will happen definitely at each scale, downstairs and upstairs. Really, to nanometer and up far from Mars. Really far from Mars. Because if you look at the patterns in the world, we see big similarity between Cell, this is neuron, the neuron cell from our brain. And huge part of the universe, those white dots are not even galaxies, not stars. They are huge clusters of galaxies. And this even bigger cluster. So, natural way of computing is different. We have to look for it. And the long-term future of computing is extraction of computational power from physical universe. Each atom should compute. Quantum computing is breakthrough. It allows our 10 million times faster than transistor chips. But it's not the end. We will have molecular, we will have atomic. So let's use quantum today. Easy part ended. <laughs> now some hardcore. 
how to program the quantum computer. All right, it's like programming first transistor computer, assembler, registers, a lot of jumps. The program completed from go to operators. It's like ENIAC, only six programmers in the world could program it. So it's difficult, it's a completely different way of computing. What's in the box? Yeah. Who said cat? <laughs> you rock, yes. And is this cat alive or dead? We know, it was. Yes, somebody else rock. But this cat randomly could be killed, but we don't know until we open the box because of random nature. Look at this letter. It's in two states simultaneously. T and W. So this big box exactly is the quantum bit. It could be simultaneously up and down. And to allow it to be in two states, we must not observe it. No interference allowed. Because particles behave like waves when we don't look at them. And they can penetrate the walls. When we look, we see the particle, like we kind of evolve. So this is the magic of quantum computer. And quantum computer solves optimization problems really cool. This landscape is typical set of different possible solutions of the problem. Mountains and valleys. The best solution is global minimum. How to find it? We have different algorithms like gradient descent. We could descend from here to here and start in local. We could start different gradient descents and boosted descent from multiple mountains downstairs, but we still could start or consume a lot of time and power. We could use metaheuristic methods like simulated annealing and perform temperature jump from here to here. So quantum annealing works like simulated annealing, but million times faster. We could penetrate this mountain when we don't look at the chip and find ourselves in global minimum. So this is the magic of quantum computer. Hello world task for quantum computer. We know hello world task as import print, print hello world. Hello world task for quantum computer looks like this. Given a limited number of colors, paint counties in the United States and avoid adjacent similar colors as much as possible. This is hello world. The task could not be solved ideally. For example, those two counties are red. But this is good enough. How to program it? It's easy. <laughs> Not easy. Easing. Easing is the name of the guy. And this equation is named after. You have to take the piece of paper, recall your mathematics, and prepare your task, your problem, in this equation. You probably remember Newton physics. F equals to M multiplied by A. This is hello world. On top of Newtonian, we have Lagrangian, which introduces energies, kinetic and potential energies. And the solution is energy. You could maximize it or minimize. And this is Hamiltonian, even more abstract than Lagrangian. So those small guys, sigmas, they are quantum bits, all those black boxes with cats. And this is the energy of the system, kinetic potential, and we have to minimize it. This simple equation, equation represents all possible solutions of our problem. All possible. This is landscape with mountains and valleys. Do we have neural networks lovers here? Sure we have. Imagine now that those sigmas are neurons. Neuron with some weight and neurons in relation between them. You have your neural graph. How to put this neural graph on some hardware? This could be arbitrary connected graph. And hardware 
has some limitations. This chimera graph is not fully connected. This is part of the chip, quantum chip. We have to fit our graph into this not fully connected graph. This is called embedding. And embedding happens when we attract entities from our business domain into qubits and set debates and uh, relations between those qubits and those unit cells. This is a qubit, this is a qubit, this is a qubit, and it could collapse into zero or one. This could collapse into zero to one. And programmatically, we could control the probability distribution of collapsing to zero or one by setting magnetically weights and setting magnetically relations of couplers. That's it. As soon as this works, it works on the hardware. Physically, the qubit is not the dot. It's stretched contour, and those contours are overlapped to exchange the information, and this chip works in absolute zero, absolute vacuum, and zero magnetic field. Any interference, the coherent system, and it collapses into some deterministic state. So bits become zeros or one. When you don't look at it, it sees all states simultaneously. All those combinatorial tasks are easily solved. For example, prime numbers factorization. Prime factorization shores algorithm. It could work with quantum computer and break the RSA security. It already did. <laughs> the full pipeline, how the quantum computing should be programmed. You define your problem as Hamiltonian, and then you do embedding. Embedding of your problem into that specific hardware. Embedding could be done manually, or could be done programmatically. This is irony. Programmatical embedding is not so efficient as manual. So we could use metaprogramming, the quantum computer, even for better optimization task, to embed that graph onto its own chip. Then we define all those biases, weights, and strengths, called biases couplings, and then we set parameters to run system multiple times because this computer is not deterministic, it's probabilistic. It will produce the minimum energy. It will give us those, 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 those bits should be zero, those bits should be one. But we don't know whether this global minimum or no. We believe internally. So we should turn it on, turn it off, take the solution. Turn it on, turn it off, take the solution. I do it multiple times. When statistics show this, this is good enough, then okay. So this part is done on transistor chip. This offloading done onto quantum computer like you offload to coprocessor. Just big refrigerator, bigger than a man, smaller than a room. Then you read the results. And this is a real code from the Hello World sample. This is C, could be Python, no problem. You see weights, you see some strength. This code translates into quantum machine instructions called QMI and sent to the quantum chip into the refrigerator. So we are here and the pace is really fast. Quantum computers will take off faster than transistor computers did. So let's just use this breakthrough technology and move forward. Now let's talk questions. <laughs> Into the mic, please. Uh, I guess the question, like you mentioned, delay, and uh, so they like one of the leaders, but also at the end they released an access to their cloud, the uh, cloud of uh, quantum computers, IBM experiments, and can we put any attention, I mean the software MD, to that particular... This is a great question. This is also smart guy. We work together. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, D-Wave is the best industrial quantum annealer. This is more practical. But to get access to D-Wave is really uh, difficult. Public customers are Google, NASA, Los Alamos Laboratory, and Lockheed Martin. They have also some non-public customers. IBM released 
different type of quantum computer, only five qubits and really stable. The wave has 2,000 with some noise. That's why you need to switch on, switch off, and repeat multiple times. On the other hand, we have Australian guys, and I genuinely believe he is from Ukrainian ancestry, Andrew Zurak. They patented quantum chip on silicon, where all those silicon gates are replaced by quantum gates. And they could embed millions of qubits into a standard sized chip. So, those guys will take off within five years. IBM already works and we, within software, already had access to their five qubits. With d it looks more practical. It already solves problems, some logistic problems, traveling salesman problems, uh, some problems from bioinformatics, materials, simulations. So, I selected the most practical because guys, from this stream wanted some practical stuff. They didn't believe that quantum computers already here and those distances are shrinking. And one, uh, not one, 10 million times faster happened only four days ago. It was only 10,000 times faster from chips. like six uh, electric uh, digital computers will satisfy all uh, computing needs in America. But uh, how do you think, uh, will we ever have uh, the amount of computing power uh, that we need or want, or is it like a process that will never end? If each atom computes, then yes. Until each atom computes, then no. But to empower that power with the power to calculate, we also need some power. <laughs> so, big data centers require 3 megawatts easily. This refrigerator requires only 25 kilowatts. If you want to model our brain, just take those billions of neurons, connect them on classical uh, transistor chip. We will require so much power that the entire planet Earth will work for this small model, for only one guy, one guy's brain. It's completely different nature of computing. Okay, that was wooden, the metal was better. This was transistor, the quantum would be better. They are not mutually exclusive because, as you saw, we have to prepare our task on transistor chips and then we flow it onto quantum. And we will continue after quantum as well. Yeah. Uh, hello. Uh, I want to uh, ask about the scalability of uh, quantum computers. Because uh, actually, uh, I remember the excitement maybe in 1980, 1998, when uh, uh, the first experiment of uh, quantum computation of quantum computer. Uh, and uh, soon it was created a quantum computer with uh, seven qubits. And after 20 years, actually, uh, we are not uh, too far from that point. Because even that uh, device uh, computer is great progress, actually. Uh, but uh, it, uh, it has hundreds uh, of thousand qubits. But those qubits are uh, connected uh, only in uh, clusters of eight bits. It works only on linear graph. And uh, actually, it's like, um, to some extent, it can be said that it is a set of uh, many quantum computers of 8 bits, of 8 qubits. It's, so it's not right. Uh, it's not right. So they could not, they could not interconnect all qubits because of some engineering, engineering difficulties. But you could map your logical entity onto logical bit and then use multiple physical qubits to execute your logic. This is first. And second, we you know the Moore's law. For quantum computers, we have Gross law. It's twice steeper than Moore's law in favor to bigger number of qubits. Okay, actually, uh, I want to clarify, because uh, um, 
for sure, the algorithm, we need a true quantum computer with a very large number of uh, true quick qubits. And uh, uh, I don't know some predictions when is it will be possible. Because, uh, of course, there are papers, uh, you mentioned uh, 10,000 millions, because it's uh, not an um, exponential improvement, it's uh, just constant. And in computer science, we constant, okay, it's great, because we have millions, but uh, it's not uh, like uh, two to uh, power of some number. Okay, 10 millions is for the same amount of the data that we run in current data centers. When the data volumes will increase, we will have logarithmic gain. Logarithmic gain, so the more data, the more benefit from quantum computing. For Shor's algorithm, it allows quadratic gain and RSA already cracked and there is a list of new algorithms, many of them suggesting the longer key, public key, really kilobits, not just hundreds of bits, 33,000 bits as a key. So this is already proposed and Google already are thinking about new security algorithms embedded into Chrome browser. Don't be greedy, please let others ask, ask questions. Let others speak. Yura, you already spoke. Yeah, just one another question. Your prediction, what will happen when quantum computing meet cognitive computing? You start talking about that, but... Okay, no problem. Recalling is an equation. In Ising equation, we abstract those sigmas into neurons. And this Ising equation shows all possible solutions, entire landscape. So if we want this machine to recognize something, we map that something to some energy, some number. It could be not absolute zero. It's exactly 351 because we need that number. And then we allow this machine to find the topology of the network to produce that number. So this machine could learn. So no problem. AI? AI as well. So those machines will allow us in four industries. In materials, design, simulation, creation of new materials, chemical processes, in energy, climate simulation, in medicine, biomics, proteomics, and artificial intelligence itself. So just four big directions. If you work in either of those four directions, you're lucky guys. Energy, materials, medicine, and artificial intelligence. Yeah, uh, so I have one question. So you mentioned, you mentioned that there are only six people in the world who know how to program quantum computing, right? Quantum computers. No. Are six, you one? Six people in the world who would be able to program any oh, okay. fast, fully electronic computer. So, are you one of them? <laughs> no, but I know from the same news release from four days ago, the T-Wave company that produces this uh, most popular quantum computer preselected the group of programmers, chosen one, and they trained them to program this refrigerator. So, I, are you going to be one of them in the future? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for your speech. It was very interesting, but my question is how uh, did you start with uh, quantum computing? <laughs> okay, it's very easy. I lacked computational power. <laughs> I wanted more computational power. So I looked to the nature, how the nature computes. And the nature computes differently. And there are research guys around the world who also have similar vision and who produce such computers. So I want to help them to build those machines. I would be outside of the team that Vitaly asked. I would be collaborating with them and I will help quantum computing to commoditize, be affordable, and we will continue to run our main workflow single-threaded and then offload to a quantum computer like coprocessor, then get results back and then continue within this thread. We will continue to multi-thread our uh, classical tasks and we will use quantum computer for really 
complicated tasks which could be solved in probabilistic way. In com computer theory, uh, uh, computer theory has uh, specific terms for the complexity of the task. P, Q, P, P, N, P, and P complete, and so on. So quantum computers allow us to solve BQP, P, and part of NP. Uh, my question, are we still stick to binary logic when programming quantum computers? Yes, we are. Uh, is a plan to move to other logics, not, not, the, not the binary go out to multiple to triple and uh, other it's, stuff? It's, it's difficult because if we look from physical perspective, we have circuit, like a donut circle. This electrical circuit, if made from proper material and uh, put into absolute zero, starts superconductivity. And within this circuit, the current could go this direction and another direction simultaneously. And when the current goes through the piece of metal, it creates magnetic field. And the rule of thumb, this way the current, this is the direction of the field. Different uh, direction of the current, different direction of magnetic field. So we have binarity in the design of this circuit. It could be one and minus one. But to be more friendly with transistor chips, we just moved one to one and minus one to zero. Um, from, from what you said, it seems that the guys who actually built that computer, they look at it as a black box, as a Schrodinger's box. So do they actually know how it works? Or do they just turn it off, uh, on and off again and then compare the results? So Schrodinger box is each individual qubit, 2,000 of them. And when we don't observe them interfere, read their state. Reading their state is interference. They work as waves. They simultaneously, with some probability in zero, some probability in one, and you have ability to solve problems like two power of 200. Really huge problems. And some qubits, physical bits, could remain physical. This damn bit was one, and it remained one even in zero temperature, zero magnetic field in vacuum. Because some mobile phone rang in the different room. It prevented this qubit to uh, enter the quantum state. So within 2,000 qubits, we have probability that many qubits are not in quantum states. That's why we have to repeat, don't look, don't interfere at all, and solve our problem within one second. Because usually after one second, system goes out of control, out of quantum state, and collapses into physical state. So the task should be solved really quick. And there is best practice how to solve quicker, even on quantum computer. If we have this landscape with big altitude, you need less iterations to solve, and you could fit within one-tenth of a second. If you have some flat landscape, you need probably more iterations and you could require more than one second system will collapse in the middle of your evolution. Uh, okay. uh, one question about applicability. So currently uh, quantum computers are somewhere far away in some laboratories, in some fridges and so on. Uh, when can we start using them like directly? Have like Amazon quantum service? Uh, this is question A. And question B, like those uh, heavy quantum chips uh, in smartphones. Do you have any forecasts? I don't know about miniaturization to the pocket size, because you still need absolute zero or superconductivity in different state. For location, it doesn't matter. You could have remote access to anything, and we already had access to IBM refrigerator. We didn't have it to delay. I think that you could just plot exponentially adoption of all those recent type of transistor chips.
For example, we had classical chips for a while. Then GPU was introduced for gamers. And then GPU really adopted, was adopted in artificial intelligence and in data uh, mining machine learning community, and they skyrocketed. So with quantum computing, the takeoff time is going to be even faster than it was with GPU. So definitely less than eight years. Less than five. Okay, let's wait for that disease five years and see what we can do with it. Maybe I can still play my mass attack on that cat computer. Okay, so any other more questions, Vlad? Please. Short question, just to understand. If we cannot interfere with qubits, how will we resolve? When we read, interference happens. Yeah. So, uh, we just... Uh, we just we switch read. refrigerator, they, they just come up, come down to the logical state and then we can read? The fact of reading yeah. means the end of waves. We just read and it will be either zero or one. If we don't read, it's still the wave somewhere between zero and one, less than one second. So when we read, it's already not in quantum state. We open the box and we see this cat is alive, smile and hungry. Yeah, that's why only one second, because afterwards uh, it just... Because we have vibrations, we have vibrations, we have other interference, not only magnetic fields, some neutrinos to penetrate these sick walls. So it's empiric. Probably they could keep those qubits longer. On the other hand, we have different engineering of quantum chips, IBM way. Small qubits, but really stable. But only five of them. So this like a drawing coin just really, really fast. Because it's probability. Yes. Okay. So next time I will explain on modern cats. <laughs> Mine. Okay. Uh, what is the recovery time once it went off the quantum state? How fast it can go back to the quantum state and uh, continue the computation? So, putting the system in quantum state takes a while. When the system is in coherence, it's known one second. It's decohere after one second or sooner. You could put it back also probably within several seconds. That's why it's only 10,000 faster, not 10 millions faster in some synthetic case that Google described two years ago, one year ago. And now multiplied by 1,000, it would be billions times faster. No, because you need to repeat your problem solving on this chip. Um, another question. So when do we need to generate RSI CDC key? You mentioned the new crypto. There are keys. dozens of other algorithms which are called post-quantum security or post-quantum cryptography. We will have just other types of algorithms because quantum machines solve only a few or several classes of problems very efficiently. There are other algorithms which just could not be mapped to that easy, easy. So uh, with RSA, trick was well, not with Q and trick was that it was breaking RSA in linear time. Yes. So regardless of how you add the key, it's still breakable, so you, you should change your mass. So, uh, get prepared for a textbook, because I think in the next five years that thing is booming, and we will, go, we will need to go to school again and learn about our cycles, functions, and so on, and give a good close to Vassil, and feel free to grab him for offline questions. Thank you, guys.